Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from Southern Sunset Farm, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the four things that you need for a successful homeschool. So we could sit here and talk about books and curriculum and laminators and pencil sharpeners and things like that all day long, but I don't think they mean a lot if you don't have these four things. So we're going to just jump right into it. I'm a homeschooling mom of 15 years. We're going into our 16th year, and I also grew up homeschooled. So I've been in this world for a long time, and I've kind of seen both sides of it. So the number one thing I think that you need for to have a successful homeschool is a love of learning yourself, okay? So we're trying to um, pass on a love of learning to our kids because we don't just want to give them an education. We want them to come out of this with a love of learning and to know how to learn and know how to find information for themselves. And uh, one of the things that uh, I think is good to know is that you don't have to know everything when you come into this. Like you're not going to be able to know everything, right? And so what you get to do is we get to learn alongside our kids. Sometimes it's going to be relearning things that we learned as a child. Sometimes it's going to be learning things new that we've never learned because our kids have different hobbies, different interests, different things they want to get into. And we kind of have to learn that in order to help teach them, right? So if you are coming into this lifestyle, you probably already have a love of learning. I know some people come into it and they've already been, they've already, um, been teachers and uh, public school or private schools or whatever. So you probably already have that. You've probably done a lot of research um, into this lifestyle before you decided to jump into it. So you most likely already have that love of learning. And um, But also what comes with that and um, what I think partners with a love of learning is just a curiosity for life. You know, um, things like going on walks with your kids and pointing out different things that you see. You know, maybe it's uh, getting close to fall time and you start talking about how the leaves are changing on the trees and things like that and just teaching your kids to have a curiosity about things um, really goes along with that love of learning and, um, and and teaching them that love of learning. So I think about it as the saying goes that if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day. If you teach him to fish you give you feed him for a lifetime and think about that with um, learning you know like I said we don't want to just give our kids an education we want them to come out of this with knowing how to learn you know a lot of people in the public school system come out of it and they're like uh, they've been at school from you know eight to three and they think they're done learning when it comes when they come home you know and that's not how it should be that's not what we want it's, learning isn't just book learning learning is is a, a lifetime thing that you want to do so you want to always be learning and growing so next up number two I would say is a tenacity to teach so this goes right hand in hand with a love of learning. You want to learn stuff. You want to find out information for yourself, find out information for your kids, and then you're going to have to pass that on to your kids. Now, this is going to look a little bit different. If you're coming from a public school or private school background, I've talked to teachers. Uh, I know a lot of people decide to come home and teach their kids, and they think it's going to look one way. They think it's going to kind of look like it does in the school, and it's not. You know, we are... We are integrating home and life here in school. And so it's going to look a lot different than it does in the school system. And that's okay. And it's actually a good thing, right? Because we can tailor that to our own needs, our own lifestyle, you know, our own family and um, how that's going to work out best for us. So tenacity means the quality of being determined, okay? So being determined to teach. And when you think of teaching, you know, I think maybe some people think of standing at a blackboard and pointing to stuff that they've written out and teaching that way. Um, teaching is a lifestyle, just like learning is a lifestyle. Teaching is a lifestyle, uh, or it should be for our kids. That's just part of being a parent, right? Is you're always teaching your kids, they're always learning. So in homeschooling, you're just going to be doing a little bit more of that, right? Because they're not going off to have their education and learn it somewhere else. You're going to be doing that at home. And so you're going to be teaching them in everything they do. So anything that you're doing, your kids are most likely going to have a curiosity and want to learn that. And you can teach them. You don't have to sit and tell them the whole process of everything that goes on. Sometimes we learn just by watching other people, right? And observing. Um, you know, if you're in the kitchen cooking, your kids love that kind of stuff. And they're going to want to come along with it. And there's so many things you can teach and learn in the kitchen. And that's one of the reasons that we don't have to do as much book work and spend as much time uh, on book work is because we're always learning in everything we do. We can make things a lesson. You know, like I said, if we're cooking, it can be, hey, this is fractions or whatever. Maybe if we're building something, we're learning measurements, we're learning numbers, we're learning how to uh, do something in a process and complete it, you know, or maybe we're learning time management if we need to get something done at a certain time. We're always teaching them. They're always learning. So one thing that really helped me early on was I read a book, it's called The Way They Learn by Cynthia Tobias. 
And so at the time, I just didn't realize that different people learn different ways. And this book really helped me. Uh, I actually it would be good for me to go back and read it again because it's been so many years. But um, I was just fascinated with it about how different people learn through audio, through um, kinesthetic learning, through visual. And so taking those things into consideration when you're teaching your child that some of them are going to learn different ways. Some of them need to put their hands to something and do it. You know, um, I know in the dyslexic world, they talk a lot about when you're doing like spelling and different things, it's good to have some type of tactile uh, thing for them to do like Play-Doh or draw in sand or salt or something like that. And that can help them learn the words and learn to remember things. And so um, figuring out what ways that your child learns best. And a lot of times you can do that just by watching them, you know. I think it's so amazing how everybody's different and everybody learns different. But if you don't realize that, then you think everybody learns like you do and you're going to teach them like you learn, right? So sometimes you have to switch that up a little bit. But it's really cool to see uh, how people express their creativity with the different ways that they learn, you know. So uh, that's number two. Number three is going to be you need a teachable child. So this one's going to be a little bit harder because it doesn't always depend on you, right? So it's going to be different uh, for each family and each individual and especially how you came into this lifestyle, right? Like some people uh, start homeschooling their kids from when they're little and they've always homeschooled and that's all the kids know. So they just know, hey, this is what we do. Some people have had a bad experience at school and they decide to bring their kids home and maybe their kids are glad to be home, but it's different. It's a change. They're, um, or they're not used to being around their family so much. Maybe they miss their friends, whatever. Maybe the kid, uh, maybe your child is, is resistant to coming home. You know, maybe, maybe they really, maybe some of them really want to, but some of them could be resistant to it. And so, so uh, you're going to have to work through that. When your kids are young, it's really easy to make stuff fun, right? You can use their toys as manipulatives when they're learning letters. You can, um, you know, you can have things to play. There's so much stuff on Pinterest for when they're young, printable things, coloring, whatever, you know, crafts and stuff. When they get older, it's a little bit hard to make everything fun. But some ways that we can ha help have a teachable child is, you know, just explaining to them why we're doing this lifestyle, if they're having a struggle with it, um, what we hope to see them get out of it, you know. And uh, one thing that you can do is you can kind of integrate things in that they like, right? We want to look at their personality, um, what they love, you know. Maybe they love horses and they love drawing horses and that sort of thing. Um, so you can integrate that in some while. Maybe you watch a movie about a horse and you pick some things out of that that are educational. Um, maybe they're into Minecraft and so you print off some Minecraft uh, handwriting pages. We did that one year and, um, you know, it was the words, different Minecraft words and little Minecraft people on there. Just gives them more of an incentive. <laughs> so my boys really struggle with writing and language arts and that sort of thing. And so one year to make that a little bit easier, I got this Usborne book. Uh, write and draw your own comics. So that's what my son did for writing that year. And it just gave him an incentive to want to do it because he got to make his own little comics and it's got little drawing stuff in there. Um, so, so that was really good. So any way that you can um, find ways like that to make it fun, to make it enjoyable for them is really good. Another thing you can do is you can incentivize things for them. You know, maybe they just have something that they don't like doing and you're like, hey, you know what, when you get done doing this, you get to go do what you want to do. You know, for um, for my kids, one thing they like to do is do video games. So it's like when you get done with your schoolwork and your chores, you get to have your allotted time on your video games, you know. Or maybe they want to go spend time with friends or call a friend or whatever. One thing you do, that's the way you can incentivize this is, we homeschool and so that gives us the gift of time and when you get your things done you get to go work on your other hobbies and do your other things that you want to do you know so my kids have little businesses where they like to make and sell things so they can go work on that um, some of them like to do stuff outside digging um, one of my son he's got a pond that he's digging and he likes to go work on that so you know you can incentivize it in ways like that and, and other things you can do to make it easier is like finding games on the computer that are fun, that make it a little bit more fun for when they get older. Um, you know, I know that I had like a little app that would do um, multiplication on my phone. So sometimes if we were somewhere waiting, I would let my daughter play that so that she could work on her uh, multiplication tables. Or there's all kind of fun games that you can look up online. Uh, we did uh, ABC yeah, was one. I think that's still around. And uh, I know there's several others. So that kind of makes it good. You know, it's like 
even if there's something that written a written page that you want them to do, you'd be like, hey, let's let's do this and let's then you can go play a game on this and maybe that'll help you learn it a little bit more. Sometimes you need to um, not do as much, right? If it's such a struggle for them, uh, some of these workbooks have lots and lots of repetitive things. And so maybe you can say, hey, look, just do this section right here. And if I see that you're getting that really good and I know that you understand it, I'm not going to make you do all these sections today, right? So you can help them out with that. You know, we want them to know that we're on this journey with them and we're partnering with them because we want to see them develop into their best self and do the best they can and have the best education they can. And so if you know that someone is with you and they're partnering with you, I think that helps so much. Um, sometimes you're just going to have kids that are just resistant. And so uh, we are their authority. We are given this job to help help them get a good education. We want them to know things. And in life, sometimes you just have to do things that you don't want to do, right? And so sometimes you just have to get through it, you know? And so, so sometimes it's not always going to be fun. Sometimes we can't find an incentive, but sometimes we just got to do the thing and get it done, right? So we do want to make that as easy on them as we can. But like I said, sometimes, you know, I don't want to do the dishes and it has to be done. <laughs> sometimes I don't want to clean the bathrooms and it needs to be done. You know, sometimes my husband doesn't want to get up and go to work, but uh, we need him to do that. And so sometimes you just have to do things that um, you don't want to do and you just have to get through it. And um, so that that's, a, that's something they need to know as well. Right. And so but maintaining trying to maintain and have a teachable child is really going to help you in the long run. And another thing sometimes as they get older, knowing your kid's personality, some kids want to go off on their own and do it on their own. You know, um, my oldest daughter, when she got about seventh or eighth grade, we were just having a struggle with her and I just gave her her books and she wanted to go in her room and do it on her own. And that worked best for her. Right. And then she could just turn in her work to me. So just trying to figure out your child and what works for them. And sometimes you just got to turn them loose and get out of their way and let them go and let them do their thing and that works too so and last thing number four is community support so um, hopefully you know if you're married you and your spouse are on board with this that can be very much supportive for you if you're going through a difficult time or just needing some encouragement um, but also outside of that it's really good to have some other friends that are on this homeschooling journey, whether they live close to you, that's really good if they live close to you. But even if they don't, if it's somebody you can call on the phone or text, hey, look, I'm having a hard time today. You know, maybe it's a group of friends. You can just say, hey, look, we're having a rough day today. Or, hey, what did you do about this? You know, having that community support is really good and so helpful because this is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's hard and um, it's a journey and we don't always know exactly what we're doing. And so we need help and we need people to come alongside us. Right. And so, you know, maybe you've got some family members that homeschool. Um, I've got a friend and uh, she's got some great family members that have helped her over the years. She had a sister that was a teacher and she would, um, she would, didn't live close, but she would FaceTime them once a week and do their science lessons with them. And then she would have homework for them to do. And the kids loved it. And then I know people that have their grandparents help or maybe even home school them. Um, I have one friend that her uh, her parents live close by and so some of the kids will go to their home school with their uh, grandparents for a couple hours during the day while she's working with the other kids you know and that works really well. Um, if your spouse comes in at night maybe uh, there's a season that he wants to work on like science or history with them or something like that um, that's always good or you know take them outside and do PE with them and then also you know getting involved with your local groups is just really I think the best option um, even if it's just a group that you have that y'all just go to the park and hang out we did that for years and years we just go to the park with friends and hang out and it was just so beneficial for my kids and for me as well now we have a homeschool co-op that we go to and um, we do classes there and I think that's really good for the kids to have some other moms teach them stuff that they're passionate about and we get to all just hang out at lunch and talk and it's a really fun good community support I think there's just so much support these days for homeschool schools and groups like that and stuff like that. There's a lot of Facebook groups that you can get in, you know, and so um, I'm so thankful that there that we have all these options nowadays with the internet and things like that. So those are the four things that I believe are very important to have for a successful homeschool. And I just want to remind you of what a privilege it is to get to come alongside our kids and watch them as they grow and learn and see these light bulbs turn on. You know, I already have one that's graduated, so I've been 
through everything with her with um with homeschooling and then i've got three more al coming along the way and um it's been amazing you know there have been it's been difficult sometimes but when i look back at the things that i got to see and experience with my kids and uh the things that we have together it's just amazing you know watch them watching them learn to read teaching your child to read and see the lights come on with that gosh it's so amazing that we get to be with these these humans, you know, and um, watch them as they grow and learn and see the gifts that they develop over time. Um, you know, my oldest two are 19 and 17 right now and just seeing them uh, go into young adulthood and with the gifts they have and the things they're learning, it's just been so amazing. And I love seeing um, what they're going to do in life, you know, because I don't know. I don't know where the journey of life is going to take them, but I am just so thankful that I got to experience so much with them during their childhood and that I got to be here for it. So, so I hope this video was somehow helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the box below. I hope you're having a great day and thanks so much for watching this video.